Hello and welcome to Perspectives, where we take a deep dive into the issues of the day and where we take a look at people's opinion on such issues. I am Ruth Osime. And I am Ola Terera Majakodumi Oniru. Today, we'll be delving into the topic of cultural values and educational systems. We have a very informational show planned, so stay tuned while we get started. Welcome back to Perspectives, the Honorized News. Last week, at the second leg of my 60th birthday celebrations, while doing my makeup, I heard the most shattering news that knocked the wind out of my sails. It literally sucked the air out of me, and it took the people around me to go downstairs to honor my guests with my presence. The deaths of Herbert Bigwe, Chizoba, and their son, Chizi Bigwe, and also Bimbo Gubanjo, will linger in our minds and hearts for a very long time. May their souls rest in peace. One of the legacies the late Herbert left behind is a university named after him. Rigo University is set to launch in September 2024. As our educational system has witnessed major decay, the Jakba syndrome has seen people from all walks of life seek further education overseas. This in return has also compromised our cultural values as Africans as our students adopt other countries' societal norms, which sometimes do not go well with our own authentic cultural heritage. This has led to several frustrations about how powerless parents are to curtail or restrict excesses as the systems abroad have eroded and striped up, stripped off the majority of our youth's basic cultural upbringing. The fall of the Nile has also created a reversal Jakba syndrome, as most parents can ill afford school fees because of the bludgeoning of the Naira. Universities such as Babcock, Covenant, and Bigwe universities have taken charge for a better narrative and educational system comparative to any global universities. They embody a style of leadership that's not only forward think thinking and ambitious, but also deeply rooted in our cultural values authenticity, and a genuine commitment to global standards while staying grounded. Authenticity and a commitment to global standards. Very well said. Godfrey Okoye founded the Godfrey Okoye University to produce graduates who would be outstanding in learning, balanced in character, and ready to advance epistemic unity in all ramifications. Afe Babalola founded the Afe Babalola University to achieve the highest standards of excellence in societally relevant research, innovation, and enterprise development. Roger Kuhn pioneered Babcock University as a Seventh-day Adventist college to nurture maximum development of thinkers and to embrace all that is true, good, and beautiful. Herbert Wigwe founded the Wigwe University to nurture thoughtful and fearless leaders while igniting Africa's potential for prosperity. The most notable educational institutions establish solid internal structures that ensure progressive results in advancing our culturally rich society with every graduating class strengthened from generation to generation. Education is a pivotal sector in progressing sustainable development through visionary leaders who painstakingly build high quality mass educational channels to develop human capital in fostering innovation, solidifying independence, and magnifying wealth. Re-engineering our cultural values starts with cultivating our educational system into an all-inclusive structure that caters to mass citizens, regardless of disability, class, ethnicity, religion, and other divisive factors. Our cultural values should generate results of national peace, unity, and prosperity, while eliminating mass suppression, ageism, tribalism, and classism. More viewpoints coming up with our special guest, but first, a unique report on our cultural values and education. The importance of education globally can't be taken for granted, as our evolution as a people depends on it. That's why investing in the education sector is vital if we hope to achieve a better future. Over the past few years, Nigeria's economic progress has slowed down due to the global pandemic. Despite many children wanting to go to school, many regions of the country do not have resources for their educational needs. The standards of education in the country has fallen drastically from the global level it used to attain. That's why it's necessary for the government to pay more attention to education 
not only to improve the quality of what's being taught in schools by trained teachers, but to also improve the structure of schools and providing them with the tools to operate. We have witnessed in recent times a level of decay in our education system and dilapidated buildings some students are made to learn in. Nanja's glory days have become a story tale, as once upon a time we had prestige and relevance with institutions like Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, University of Ibadan, University of Nigeria and Suka, hosting the best minds from all over the world right here in Nigeria. Now we have people living in droves to seek education abroad, which has given birth to the popular Jagba syndrome. This has impacted our nation negatively with our cultural heritage gradually becoming less visible as many of our youths have been stripped of that basic cultural upbringing due to the exposure to foreign cultures which have now become increasingly prevalent in their ways of life. Today on Perspectives, we will be taking a look at how we can bring back the glory days to our education system and how universities can improve to meet up with global standards in order to give our educational sector a facelift. Well, as we all know, I, 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 the educational sector definitely needs a facelift. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's, when you look at some of these de dilapidated buildings and mm -hmm. you wonder in the days of yore, the University of Ibadan, mm -hmm. you know, how it was a place where people even from abroad used to come to because it was one of the best universities in the world at the time. And um, our prayer is that the government will invest a lot in, in, in the educational infrastructure Absolutely. and make it and make the quality of things that they use in school global standard. Mm -hmm. um, I also am happy that we have Bako, Covenant and Wigwe universities now, mm -hmm. which, which now means at least that will put less pressure on parents mm -hmm. to having, having to send their kids abroad because at least these universities are global standard and globally accepted. Mm -hmm. you know, so I think that's, that's a huge step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Instead of paying the amount of money you pay for your children to school abroad, you pay almost like one third or half the price. Right. And then it also keeps you in greater contact with your children, they're easily, they're more accessible. Absolutely. You don't have to travel 6,000 miles and buy tickets for millions mm -hmm. of Naira just to go and see them. I think it's, we can't overestimate how important the educational sector is to our country, mm -hmm. to every citizen, and how important it is to make sure that there's no citizen left behind, regardless of their background, regardless of their health condition. There's so mm -hmm. much that education can do in advancing every single citizen. You'd be surprised yeah. that who will be the next genius inventor in science or technology? Mm -hmm. Who will be the next entrepreneur that would hire 10,000 Nigerians? Who would take us to those the heights we're looking for? Yeah, that's true. And it's education that would do that. And I think, yes, you said it, the Babcocks, the Godfrey Okoye University, and now upcoming, we're getting ready to witness Wigwe University open yeah, their doors yeah, to their very best September. set of students in September. So we're really another having thing, really good hope yeah, there. Another thing that I, that also important that we look into, even though when the, our guests come on, is this cultural value thing. The truth of the matter is that are they losing cultural values because they live abroad or are they losing cultural values because of the Gen Zs, because they are Gen Zs? You know, there's a, there's a miscommunication gap to a certain extent between the Gen Zs and older people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether it's so much because they are living in foreign shows and studying mm -hmm. in foreign shows or because they are of that generation that they are less mm -hmm. tolerant of cultural values and old traditional beliefs. It depends on specific cultural values. Are you well, referring to like respect? Uh, respect humility. for your elders. Okay. Um, Tolerance. I mean, okay. in, in those days, you could tolerate, but the tolerance mm -hmm. level of most Gen Zs today is practically non-existent. In speaking for the Gen Z or the younger generation, mm -hmm. there's some sort of repression or suppression that doesn't allow you to exhibit your full potentials that we're well, trying that's a, to limit that's, over that, time. I'm not, really, I'm not really sure about that, but like I said, when the uh, two guests come in, we we'll, you know, bring that up because it's really quite a sensitive topic it when is, it comes to absolutely. the Gen Z's. <laughs> We're heading for a short break, but stay with us because we'll be back shortly to introduce our guests. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. Time to welcome our guests. Joining us now is Joseph Edgar, popularly known as the Duke of Shomolu. He has several years of experience in investment banking and stage productions. He is co-founder of Hamilton and George, 
Welcome back to Perspectives. Glad to have you with us today. Thank you. We also have in our midst Nana Okoye, who is the Chief Communications Officer at Rigwe University, where she plays a pivotal role in bringing to life the visionary goals of the late Dr. Herbert Rigwe. With a rich background in strategic communications, Ms. Okoye has been instrumental in meticulously planning and executing comprehensive communication strategies for Rigwe University. Through her adept leadership, she has successfully positioned Big Ridge University as a beacon of academic excellence and innovation. A very warm welcome to both of you. Thank you very but, much. But as, as, as we know, the nation is mourning over the death of this, of this lovely um, two gentlemen and a family and child, a wife and child of one of them. So, um, um, Edgar, do you want to say something briefly about Bimbo? Okay, yeah. <coughs> Thank you for having me here. And, uh -huh. and like I said, um, the nation is more than mourning the, yeah. the passing of this um, family and um, these two gentlemen. Um, as a stockbroker, I, I must say that um, I, I witnessed very succinctly Bimbo's contribution to the market, especially mm -hmm. when it came to the demutualization of the market. That exercise has been in the offering for years, and I don't know why they couldn't do it, you know, up until his leadership, you know, as chairman of the of mm -hmm. the NGX. So this has opened the market up to new ownership, you know, opened it up to better transparency, opened it up to better corporate governance, and the market is better for it right now. As you can see, that the market seems to be the only major thing that seems to be working well in our country for now. So Kudos to him for that. Yeah, for that. What about you, Nana? What would you like to say about Herbert? Um... I think it's clear the kind of person he was just for the fact that the nation is mourning. And he also speaks to his character, just um, the mood in the office. Um, I think everyone is sad. Everyone is, um, you know, confused, but we're not lost. Mm -hmm. um, I think his vision has now become our mission to realize. Oh, that's a good one. Um, he, was, he was a great leader, but he led with compassion. And just to speak briefly on his wife, she was there in our meetings, she was very supportive, always cheering us on. I remember many times we would be invited to his house, the entire team for dinner. And you know, she was very, she was, she was, on, she was in the background, but when she spoke, you could tell that she was really intelligent yeah. and she knew a lot they about- were, They were a good force you know, together. They were, as a couple. and we're definitely gonna miss him, but I think it's now up to us to, you know, take the baton he's given to us and make sure that we drive this vision okay. and realize it to the best. May their souls rest in peace because at, at the end of the day, everybody wants to leave this, this earth making an impact mm -hmm. positively one way or the other. Yeah. Both Bimbo and Herbert have made the impacts in the short time they were here on earth. Yes. And may their souls continue to rest in peace, including Chisoba, who was a very powerful force. A lot of people don't know that, but she was a very powerful force behind, behind Herbert. And of course, their son, their son Chizzy, may all their souls rest in peace, which yeah. also brings us to the conversation that we're having today, yes. rekindling our cultural values and also improving the educational system of which Herbert is playing, has played, or is playing a very huge role in, even though he's not here to witness his mission. So let's start with you, um, Edgar. I know that you, have, you feel very strongly about when children are taken abroad for studies. Mm -hmm. You spoke about the impacting effect of their cultural barriers being compromised. Mm -hmm. So can you elaborate more on that? Okay, so before people start um, 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 jumping at me, you know, so I must say that I am, I am a victim, as it were, having three children um, out there. So in a rush to run away from what we think are the issues in the educational system here, we do not take into cognizance the softer issues, who, softer issues which eventually in the long run now play a very, very powerful role, mm -hmm. you know, in shaping the lives of these, our children. Mm. So we begin to see a new crop of Nigerians who are totally dislocated from the cultural, um, from, from our cultural um, um, environment here, yeah, you get, and are not totally accepted in the other side. They're just in the middle, which that leads to a lot of social cultural problems. You get they, they fall into 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 drug abuse. They fall into sexual uh, um, um, orientation. Or, uh, yeah, um, deviancy. What are you saying is the reason why they fall into this? Because there's a major cultural shock. You get. I do not forget that some of us now in our fifties when we went to school, you know. So we went to the lower parental guidance. You go, you go to school three months, come back home. 
Do you get? And then so you have that um, what's the word now? That regulation. You know, for want of your other But work, don't, you, yes. don't you think this is also because I was discussing with her before mm. you came on mm. that it's a Gen Z issue. I don't know whether that really makes any difference whether you're here or abroad. No, 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 because no. Because no, you no, have no, the no, ones no, here so too. The, the major difference. They're falling this no, 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 so The major difference here now is that here, there, there's, there's social permissiveness mm -hmm. of some of these things mm -hmm. that are not really, really here. Mm -hmm. Culture here, even though it has been eroded, but it's still there. It's still, but it's this still exists. Exist. This sexual orientation but not and as, whatever not, exists not, here. Not as institutionally acceptable. Well, yeah, maybe not yeah. acceptable, yes. Not as generally acceptable as it is there than here. What so sort of culture do you referring to? Culture is just the way of behavioral life. Behavioral culture. Behavioral culture. Behavioral traditional culture. values. Traditional values. So for example, I'll give you a little example. I don't know if, I don't know if my wife will keep me by this in public. Okay. Now, so, so, so my daughter falls ill, you know, and she calls me yeah. from an ambulance. I've said so before now. And she calls me on, on, on video. The ambulance, all those wires all over her. Mm. Mm. She's 19 plus. She's in the UK. Okay. And she's talking, she's talking, and I says, oh, I've been drinking. It's that strange to me. Do you get it? I've been drinking. You know, so I'm like, why have you been drinking? Mm -hmm. You know, why are you drinking alcohol? Why are you drinking? I'm 19. Yeah, but she's an adult. God bless you. Mm -hmm. So she now says, so this is not like an adult mm -hmm. or not. I'm just trying to show you right. the, the institutional support mm -hmm. do you get that, that she had that didn't allow me to penetrate yeah. as a father. Mm -hmm. Do you get So he says, Oh, and I says, why have you been drinking? I said, oh, you can't pry. She said to you that you she can't said pry. you can't pry. Was this while she was in the ambulance? In the ambulance, yeah. Okay. So, so I get upset. I said, what do you mean by that? She drops the phone. Don't take my call for three days. Mm -hmm. So I call a friend who lives there. So please let me check up on her. He goes and calls back and says, Edgar, we have to be very careful so you don't get a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. She's an adult. Do you understand? So, so and she has created those boundaries. Mm -hmm. that even those people didn't even let me get that far. Do you get? So mm -hmm. just let her be. Mm -hmm. Do you get? So this you led me to be different. Have done in Nigeria. Oh, totally different. Totally, 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 totally different. Totally different. Yes, what totally what different. What would you do? No, totally. Me? What would she would come back home. She would come back home. From Daddy. Daddy. Okay. See, let me tell something. Even this thing I'm talking now. If if uh, FL will see that six hundred thousand at a time, I've entered the place. Oh. <laughs> so, so, so you Lagos, think that would help her develop more? Yes, 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 because, because, because suppressing her. No, right no, no, no. Just knows that it will be better control. It will be better control. So, you know, more of suppressing. Man, it's, 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 it's people have sent their children as men abroad and they came back as women. <laughs> You know, so, so we don't take it. Happens it's in Nigeria. There are so many men that no, are just women. Is it, is it, no, but it's, but it's illegal. It's, it's, it's illegal there. Yeah. So, no, yeah. let, let's don't see, please, my sister, don't be annoyed. Let's don't, let's don't, let's don't water down the, this. What I'm trying to say here now, mm. you get? Because people have lost their children to suicide. Yeah, true. I, I've called a Zoom meeting on this thing, and over 300 parents came on that meeting, and I heard stories. People are crying. People are lamenting. There are other factors that are causing these issues, like you said, the drinking and behavioral conditions, but not necessarily cultural differences. My sister, when when a young girl walks in here and says hello, and then your father will say, "Ah, uh -uh, is that how to greet?" Yeah, that's true. Even if that girl is for the two, you get is that how to greet? Oh, sorry, sir. I mean, yeah. And then then that person transferred to another climb. They would even call the person for say, say, hey, hey, okay. get, Hello, I, Ruth, how are you? you, you know, <laughs> these things might look very... Yeah, I know. But I we are very, so, so we are seeing mutants. We are, we are creating in the last 10, 15, 20 years since started what I want to call a race of, I mean, a, a demography of mutants. You get, when they come here, they are detached. They don't belong anymore. They don't understand what is going on. When they go there, you get me now, somebody sent me a picture of his son smoking weed on the streets of New York. No, but his son takes a picture of himself. So, I mean, who took a picture of him? Mm, someone his is, friend took a picture of himself. No, the son put it on social media. Oh, he put the thing on social media. You get it. Wow. And, and, and he calls me, and then we call the boy. And, and okay. what boy said what? It's not your problem, it's not your business. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring it in there to give us our input on these cultural factors on respect, ageism, classism I in think Nigeria. I think it's both ways. I mm -hmm. definitely agree with um, Edgar here saying that, you know, um, let's be honest, over there, kids grow up a lot faster. Yeah, they do. Right? By 16, some of them are leaving by themselves. 
and here there's more control with parents. Mm. And our culture is one that most times girls don't even leave their homes until they're married. Until they're married, yes. Boys, the same thing. So there they see freedom. I went to school there as well. And there's more freedom there. And the lifestyle actually promotes certain, or rather the culture over there promotes certain lifestyle, as opposed to, the same thing happens in Nigeria, let's not get that wrong. Mm. But I think the difference is Nigeria is an environment that will frown upon it, that will make life a lot harder for you if to you want to yourself. deviate from, you know, what we call the norm here, mm -hmm. as opposed to in the States where that is encouraged. Um, if you identify like uh, LGBTQ, you're giving um, special treatment, you're giving preferences. If, so I, I think it's, you can, you can leave, you can leave, um, you can deviate in both places, right? But I think the consequences are more, um, are a lot harder here than it is over there. Okay, let's talk about um, um, the scholarship available at Big Bay University, for instance, because um, like um, you were saying the other day that it has encouraged parents to now look within and if possible, bring their kids back home mm. where they can be, keep closer view on them and also be close, have easier access to them. So in places like Wigwe University, Bangkok University, Covenant University, who are those committed to scholarships? Do you understand? And how many percentage of your students will be recipients of this scholarship? Um, so we have different scholarship schemes. Um, we're actually going to be having one on Monday. There's a scholarship announcement, com a competition coming up on Monday. So make sure you're following our social media pages and our mm. website. We're, we're going to announce that on Monday. Now, we also have other scholarship schemes for, um, luckily, our chancellor had a lot of um, friends in good places. And they've also committed to, you know, sponsoring kids and also um, creating scholarship funds. So there'll be a lot of opportunities for scholarships. We just haven't announced it, but we will in the very near future. How many percentage? Um, 10 percent, at least 10 percent of students that will come to Wigo University will be on scholarship. Okay, okay. That's really great. mostly underserved communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any classifications of preferred demographics? So you want maybe 50 percent male, female? What no, are your preferred? No. We're, we're looking more for um, individual students who have you know scored really well, done really well in school, and their um, future is promising. So okay. that's. The criteria. Okay, what about that. global partnerships? So you're looking into global schooling, global learning, absolutely. And having international um, students on board. Absolutely, and I think we're going to talk about that in, um, later on here. But um, we definitely have. Um, we're actually definitely going to be expecting a lot of international students as well. Um, it's something that we want to see happen from September. It's not a future plan. It's a right now plan. So okay. that's we're happening. going on break now, and then we'll continue with our conversation. So we'll be right back on perspectives. See you soon. Don't go too far. Okay, I want to ask you, um, Edgar, do you see the emergence of Covenant Universities, Bangkok and Big Green Universities playing a dynamic role in, with the parents whose children school abroad? For instance, do you see a high, tu high turnout of reverse Jackma? What advantage do you think these schools will provide for parents? Okay, so basically, we are beginning to see some of these private universities meeting up to the standards of the schools that we are going in Russia and Australia and out there. I've mm -hmm. been to some of these schools in the UK, and honestly, God, we are not saying anything about that place. Yes, I've been to some of these schools in the UK in terms of, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, um, um, academic environment and all mm -hmm. of that. I've seen some schools here in Nigeria, you get that can best uh, match. Um, those schools. And then universities like Wigo University have heard that 35% of their faculty is coming from those schools. And then okay. uh, Wigo University is when you walk into a classroom, do you understand? Because, uh, I mean, um, Habert and um, so rest in peace, we had a long conversation on, on this thing last week, Wednesday, do you get? He talked about the smart classroom, where once you walk into that classroom, you, know, you find yourself in in somewhere else, are you mm. getting me now? Mm. So, 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 now with the way these things are going now, the way the, 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 the exchange rate is going, exactly. a lot of people are finding it very difficult. Before, we started doing this at 300 naira per, uh, to the naira, to live at 2,000 something. Now we are, mm. we used to pay once, now we are paying payment plan. We are even finding it difficult to meet the um, payment plan. They will write him letter, I'll be calling their bluff, drive the guest, drive the guest, I can't kill myself. <laughs> No, drive the guest, seriously. I can't keep myself. You know? So, 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 so. Drive the girl. I think the big is not about. They write me letter and say, oh, they are threatening me. They give me till 12th of uh, June. I say, my sister, what can I do now? 
bring the game back. Then the, on the 11th of June, they rise me again and say, give me the 18th of June. So they themselves can see that there's a problem. Yeah. Do you get There's a major problem. So you're you considering get? Nigerian university. Yeah, so, so now if we are having schools like Wigo University, who's giving me the same standard? Yes. Do you get me now? Why can't I come? So are you ready to... Yes, yes, to yes. And, uh, what, I was telling, what I was telling um, 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 uh, Auntie Ruth here the, over the weekend, over the weekend, is that there's that soft power that this, uh, these schools play with, especially secondary schools. That soft power, that soft power is the women. Do you yes, get? Because you mentioned something about women yes. wanting to send their children to expenses. Yes, God bless you. So, 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 Ruth's daughter is in uh, Greenland. So my, my also now go to it, it happened to me. So 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 the late Herbert offered me a scholarship. Do you get yeah. based yeah. on my this because for me this is a, this is a life choice. Oh. This this thing I'm doing here now is a life choice. There has to be a reverse Japan. Do you get because on the end of the day, education with the wrong kind of cultural input is disaster. Because mm. we are end of the day, we, are, we are creating we are creating we are creating aliens who will now come and and, and, and punish us. Mm. You get me now. So that's why education has to be well looked at. And education is not government. It's what people like Habat are doing. It's what people like Afro are doing. I've gone to sit down with Afro for for hours. For, for, uh, sit down on the floor to listen to him. Do you get me now? <laughs> God bless you. So I'm ready. But see, the soft power is another major problem. We always don't look at the soft things. We just talked about culture, and I thank you guys for giving us the opportunity on this series because this is the first time I'm seeing cultural values, cultural effects of this thing being discussed in mainstream media. Mm. Now, the soft power now is women. Women, all these high brow schools, they target women, mothers, and wives. They are the ones that put the pressure for the children to come to those schools. In respect, when I was looking for, I don't put my own family up from there. When I was looking for a son, a um, school for my son, Alvin. The mother was not looking at curriculum. The mother was looking at who goes there. Uh, Doing's daughter is there. Mm -hmm. This one's mother is there. How is the pity? Like the children are not touched, and that is that. And that's, and that's what the target. Mm -hmm. But I remember you said something about even the curriculum. You said that in private schools, when it's time to do bayek exams, God they send you. them to public schools. God bless you. Go and study. Let me say this Let me say this Openly now. Don't they do it in? Don't they do bayek bayek uh, curriculum in, mm -hmm. in private schools? I'm still facing. Let me say openly now. Everybody's going to beat me. Going to beat me. You will enter these posh schools in Lagos. Mm -hmm. I, I, I five. So I've done the whole five. I've talked about experience. Mm -hmm. We will pay on the average one point something million per term, mm -hmm. which is even more now. When we first started, we were doing one point something million per term. Mm -hmm. And they are teaching us Cambridge. They are teaching us IGSE. -E. No YEC. I called them and said, why can't we just even put YEC inside this matter? Add another hundred k on top of this 1.2 million. And let us have the YEC curriculum. They refuse. Now, when my child gets to SS3, final year, they will not tell us to go and do YEC. So they will not collapse that YEC three years syllabus mm. in two, Fantastic. three months. Wow. Then the teacher in that post school will come and be doing private mm -hmm. um, coaching. Mm. 100K per subject. Wow. If you are doing eight subjects, how much is that? <laughs> now, when you finally even go to the UK, is that why you now enter the school? Mm. Are you seeing now? Yeah. So, you see, why this happens is because at that secondary level, the, 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 the parents don't have the courage and the confidence to insist on what is right. Mm. And that is why people like this are coming up to say, this is the right way mm -hmm. to go. Mm. Why am I doing IGSE, IG, IG, I don't know what they call them again, IGSE, Cambridge, all those funny, funny things. Mm. And then... I have to I, resort to why I have to resort to in Canada. I've seen people that it's why they used to get admission in Canada. Speaking of which, now, um... No, 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 so we don't deviate from the whatever. What's the cutting edge that your university provides for your, for, your, for your students? How was it intentionally designed? And how many professors do you have from the international market? Okay, so I think what I always tell people is, um, I remember when we were in meetings and we were trying to um, strategize. We never designed Wigo University to compete with any Nigerian school. Okay. Our vision is that Wigo University will be a world-class institution that will be competing with the likes of Harvard University, mm. Yale University, UPenn and the likes. And that is the intricate details that come within the design of the school. 
like you were saying, our smart classroom, our state-of-the-art um, facilities, even our um, faculty ratio. So we have over 30% of our faculty that will be coming from these Ivy League institutions in the UK, US, Asia, and also some other African countries. Um, also, our exchange programs. We've partnered with big schools around the world that will be able to accept our students for mm. a year during their time at Wigwe University. Separate from that, again, our chancellor used his good network to also get us some good partnership with global institutions. So Wigwe University students will have internship opportunities mm. while during the, um, the four-year course that they, um, that they spend with us. And some of these um, institutions are international institutions. And I think the reason for this is because the vision is that every Wigwe University graduate will not come out and be a job seeker, instead okay. be a job <laughs> creator, <laughs> right? And like I said earlier, even down to the, our curriculum design and things like that, um, if you're doing something in creative arts, we're not just teaching you how to draw or how to do, you know, do animation or how to do music. Uh -huh. We're teaching you the business aspect of doing music. We're teaching you how to monetize your skills. So when he's saying he wants to nurture fearless leaders, uh -huh. that's the whole point. So down to the way your thoughts, uh -huh. down, to what's, um, down to the leadership classes, the classes on innovation, the classes mm. on, on entrepreneurship. So these are things that I don't think, I think I can confidently say that not a lot of schools in Nigeria are doing. Mm. So that is, so we don't sit down and say, okay, who are we trying to compete with? No, we're trying to make sure that you can skip going to Harvard and come here and you're going to get as good quality education that Harvard would give you. Fantastic vision. Fearlessly does, absolutely, that's what we want of citizens in Nigeria. Um, what are the schools how is this segmented now? What are the schools that are ready to recruit students in September? Um, we School have, of medicine. We have, um, we have four colleges. We do not okay. have medicine. So we have arts, okay. we have management and science, we have um, engineering, and we have um, compute social sciences. So we have those four colleges. Um, it's definitely growing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure he's mentioned it in one of the events he's attended. I think in the very near future, hopefully within the next couple of years, we're going to have a medical school and we'll be partnering with... Um, an American um, That's good. What school. falls under social sciences? Um, I don't understand. What, when you say what falls what under... What degrees? Yes, yeah. So that's a college, yeah. Right. So you can visit our website, you get all the courses, but every college has a full um, course mm -hmm. on can, you, can you tell us about the Venture Capital Fund? Okay, so it's an interesting um, plan that we have. So for the graduating students at Wigo University, I'm sure there'll be maybe one or two um, top students. So the plan is when you're graduating and you have a great business idea, you come before the board and you present your business proposal to them. And if they buy into it, they will give you the capital to start your business. So that's um, a um, venture fund that we that's have. Good. Okay. Yes. Now back to line you. with the university? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Back to you, Edgar. So do you foresee this upgrade of these universities encouraging parents to bring their children um, back to Nigeria. And then also, because of the bludgeoning fall of the Naira, yeah. a lot of parents are ill, they can, they can ill afford the school fees. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the children there are made to work mm -hmm. to, sub to, to, to support themselves. Yeah. I've even heard of situ situations where they've actually gone to GoFundMe. Yeah. So what kind of impact do you think this has had on children whose parents now cannot afford their school fees, but they don't really want to come home? Has it affected them mentally? That's a friendly one, the parents or the students. Sorry? The parents the students, or the students. The students. That's why, that's why we're having an increased rate of psychological problems in that population. Mm -hmm. Do you get So we're getting a lot of people going, a lot of students going to therapy, a lot of students are going for a lot of students trying to kill themselves. I've heard all of that stories because I'm very open and people tell me these stories and things like that. You know? So for me, this is quite, you know, God always has a way of meeting Nigeria at the point of need. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So all of these schools, the pioneers of private universities, pioneers of um, um, let's even don't even let's even don't limit it to just private universities. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some very brilliant public universities like, like Lillard, which one? University of Illinois is very brilliant. They've, as of today, as of today, they won series of awards. Really? Yes. What's very, the infrastructure like? I know I've been there, but I just I know that because we they, get they the impression keep, that most of these universities are dilapidated and. Mm -hmm. And they keep, they keep winning awards. Oh, that's national awards. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, national awards. awards. Okay. That's good to hear yeah, that some of them are still winning. There are some public schools that win international awards in specific, um, specific um, 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 courses areas. or, or um, areas. You know? So for me, it's a business decision. 
Do you get the business decision? Like I told my in laws, you know, when they say, Oh, why do you want this own particular sort to go to River State? River State, that's what we do in University now. Do you get I'm like, look, it's a business decision. When those other ones left, it was three hundred naira apart to the dollar. Today now it's one thousand five fifty. Only God knows where it will reach by the time I yeah. got finished. You know. So it, it, for me as a father, it get as a parent, and I want to believe I'm a representative of that population. Uh-huh. It's a business it's a, it's a business decision. But when you had that zoom call, when your daughter pulled yeah. her stunts and you had that zoom call, you yeah. said you had where? 300 parents. Yeah, yeah, Can parents. you give us some of the stories that they shared? Yeah, you? yeah. So I have to mention, you know, suicide. You know, suicide. Some of them were parents of children who had committed suicide? Yes, some parents who had committed mm. suicide in the UK. Mm. You get it, based on all these pressures. You get it. You know, and then um, we've had prostitution. Yeah. What do you mean prostitution? As in the girls were prostitution? Girls were prostitution, yeah. yes, to make up. Yes, oh, yes. They were prostitution to, to raise money for to pay school. school fees, yes. Really? Yes. A lot of prostitution. Wow. A lot of prostitution. Yeah, yeah, then drug, that, that one's an epidemic. Mm. You get every such from weed. Because because Yeah, like, but the drug issue is also epidemic here. No, but you see you see you have to you have to look at you I don't to, think it no, necessarily has to do no, with them no, speaking abroad. You, you know, say, now something they lead to something. You have to look at causative causative, causative factors or something or triggered for some things. So so mm-hmm. anybody who is in Nigeria here, yeah, anybody who's in Nigeria who's taking drugs, maybe something else push out. Mm-hmm. Now, somebody who is in the UK taking drugs, you get I want to just limit that person that that particular experience you gave me now to that causative, causative fa- trigger factor. Let me just make an okay mm-hmm. by my tongue right now. Hey. So a child who has been used to getting school fees as a when do you mm-hmm. gave me now? Do not forget mm-hmm. that these children, these Gen Z, are talking, I don't have the kind of strength Shock that, that, that don't, we have. Don't. So, for like, example, now my daughter, now, when she gets an email from the school, she's in a panic. Mm-hmm. So the email just reminding her that school fees is due. Is it? Because she never, for four years, she's never had that kind of experience. Would you know that happens to parents who are here too and can't afford, students who are here too and their parents can't afford You know, but see, that's where the cultural thing now comes in. So you can still hold each other. You can, okay, give me some example now. Hold each other. The parents, hold on, give me some example now. If my children are in this school, in Lagos, in Nigeria, do you get me now? I can not walk up to the school principal or the bossa or anybody and cut a deal. Man to man, eyeball to eyeball, I go pay no vex, take a take for check. But that's how you are talking to a computer. Do you get? Mm-hmm. There's no, there's you know Nigeria. There's always that, that, mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Are you And these things affect that child. So I'm telling my daughter, okay, okay, we need to pay. And this is real life story. Do you get? Yeah. So we've paid, we've paid, we've paid twenty three point five, twenty three thousand five hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. It remains five hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you getting me now? So they give me payment plan. So I pay to pay the five hundred pounds. pounds. They give me payment plan. So I pay. Yeah, it's because five hundred pounds now is now two thousand something. Do you yeah. get? Yeah. So when they gave me payment plan, the five hundred pounds was one thousand five hundred. Are you getting me? So mm. it's like I'm chasing. Oh. I'm not the politician now. Mm-hmm. Now I'm writing play. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm chasing. It, 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 task I'm telling you, kiss movie, kiss movie, kiss movie, you buy ticket. It kiss movie, kiss movie, kiss movie. Do you get me now? I don't want to direct this to your daughter, but will children in such situations be willing to come back home? No, come here, we'll get there. That's what I'm telling you. Come, we'll get there. So, mm-hmm. so I, he has a question. I want to prove this point to you now, the cultural part of it. Do you get mm-hmm. me now? So, mm-hmm. this is my daughter. We paid X. We paid 300 pounds, remaining 250 pounds mm-hmm. for this money to complete. Why can't you call somebody and say it's only 250 pounds now? Give us the next week. Mm-hmm. You might say there's nobody to talk to. Mm-hmm. Are you getting me now? Mm-hmm. But it was in Nigerian school. Even in this big university. I, I take night bus, I go to River State and have that Nigerian um, conversation. Which this means your own answer now. Which is, it is no longer that child's decision. Mm. Do you get me now? It's a business, it's, a, it's, it's an economic decision. I can't afford it, I can't afford it, I can't afford it mm-hmm. anymore. Even when they're over 18. Yeah, so if it's over 18, they pay. Them. Pay. Mm-hmm. But since they can't pay, mm-hmm. since they can't pay, see my decision, you get me now. Right. So, so since, since you know what to come down that list, all those societal problems of prostitution, yes. all those drug disease, mm-hmm. all those. So most are, most are not willing to come back home. No, most are will, those that have sense are willing to come back home. Yeah, but some of them might not be willing to come back home, but being forced to come back home because of the circumstances. Because circumstances right. are you get directly you know? or indirectly still lead to mental Men, mental mental mental, mental, mental problems. You get me now. Because if they are not willing to be back here mm-hmm. and they are being forced to be back here. No, is it is it is it my sister? Mental stress. Yeah, but I know, like I know, the bloodline of the Naira. God bless you. I know where you are coming from, this matter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I will face you after this whole talk. <laughs> after this whole thing. You see them there, works them. You see mm-hmm. him. Pra- let's be pragmatic. That's the problem of this country. Mm-hmm. Let's be pragmatic. 
Do you get? I can't afford this thing anymore. Now, most parents are faced oh, with that. You get, you get. Mm -hmm. I could, but I no longer can. Mm -hmm. Now, I have an alternative here that's offering me the same standards as there, but it's just that it's in River State. Mm. So, because you want to continue going to O2 and continue mm. living uh, the life, you say you don't want to come back, then pay. Mm, then if you can't, then if you can't pay, do you get if it seems goes out to me paying, do you get me now? Then you come back, do you get, okay. and you still get the same, um, the same standard, but just that is in reverse state. Mm. But speaking of which, mm -hmm. now that we come to that, there's been this big brouhaha about Herbert University, Migwe University, charging in dollars. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. because we live here as Nigerians and as such fees should be charged in our currency. Mm -hmm. Some would even argue as far as saying if you go to India or you go to Ethiopia, mm -hmm. you pay their fees in their currency. Mm -hmm. So that's been that, but I know that you've tried to clear the air in terms of why you're charging dollars and what are, but are there, is there any room for Nigerians to be charged in Naira or I do think, they have to pay dollars as well? I think we always made it clear that Nigerians would pay in Naira. Okay, good. Nigerians okay. would actually be invoiced in Naira. Okay. So the reason it was um, in USD in the first place because we're attracting international students mm -hmm. and they want, uh, the USD is a generally globally accepted mm -hmm. currency. Mm -hmm. So that was for them. And okay. like I said before, a lot of our students will be coming from abroad. But Nigerian students will be invoiced in Naira. Okay, so if you go onto the site, at some point, maybe not yes. now, later, you will see it transfer, transcribed, I mean, translated into Naira for us, the Nigerians at school. Absolutely. Okay, because I, I think you needed to clear the air. So yeah. is there a demographic percentage of international students versus Nigerian students? Um, we wouldn't know that until school resumes. Mm -hmm. But it will be, um, but, but they will be present. Majority of the marketing is targeted foreign, internationally. Um, I think both. I think you can say both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the doors are open to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what about the Nigerian faculty? What do they bring to the table? Um, so there's something that um, the late Dr. Herbert used to say. and God bless his soul. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said, to get the best people, you have to pay them well. Mm -hmm. You have to give them appropriate and competitive remunerative packages. Mm -hmm. And... That is why I can confidently say that our Nigerian faculty are probably the best faculty um, members in all universities here. So we selected the best, and there was actually a true story. So one of our deans who was from um, MIT mm -hmm. um, was doing an interview, um, interviewing a Nigerian professor. He, this person was hired, but I can't say the name, but um, he said, this person can compete with any professor the best professors wow. he has met in his life. Absolutely. That's good. So those are the kind of people we brought on board. Mm. So in terms of bringing the best faculty internationally, we've also gathered the best faculty locally. Mm. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah. But um, um, <clears throat> Mr. Edgar, do you believe, like you know she was saying earlier on that a lot of children who are forced to come home mm -hmm might not necessarily adapt or might not necessarily be happy with it. Mm -hmm. So what if this child decides that they want to work for a year, do a gap year, work for a year, raise enough funds to be able to assist you with the tuition or fees? Would you embrace something like that? You know, you know for me, I, I want to divide this children into two, into two sets. The ones that are already gone and the ones who are in line to, to, to go. Mm. Me, Joseph Edgar. Mm -hmm. And because I'm just coming from railway station now, where I went to drop my child to go back to the boarding school. So a mm -hmm. lot of parents were, were there, and it's a highbrow school, mm -hmm. and the targets. And I had this conversation with them, you get. And majority of them are saying that the subsequent ones would look eternally. You get. Okay. Because <laughs> it's always best to start what you know you can finish. Mm -hmm. Now, so if a child who's already out there says, okay, I'm ready to do that work for that gap to save my it's not a problem. But I begin to ask myself, what kind of work will you do to earn 24,000 pounds in one year? Mm -hmm. you get, I begin to ask myself. Mm -hmm. So if you expose your child to that kind of work, then you have to Yeah, but they're planning to meet you halfway. They're not saying they'll pay I the whole fees. I think it's legal for student people, to, student to, visas, visas, to take even, time okay, off. Okay, that's, yeah, you know, that's, so, that's so, true. Yeah, that's true. That's you know, true. So, so for me, eh, and that's why, that's why, that's why, you see, you see, because I'm a socially conscious person, you know, so when we designed our play in London, I was UK, you know, so I, I deliberately came to them to say to them, come to that session. Because we have an economic summit, you get mm. with Emir Samson speaking, you know, Khalifa Mohammed Samson speaking, mm. you know. 
you come to that session. I give them that exclusivity. You get, come and talk. 900 people are coming. 900 Nigerians are coming to that show. Come and sell this message of this thing. You get me? So apart from even sell what message of the of university. the of the of, of the, okay, of the university. University. Okay, university. Okay, university. university. Because for me, for me, it's it's, it's a national passion. Mm. You get the mm. Uyghur University, university. yes, mm. in the first instance, and then and then Nigerian um, education. You get me now. You see, one last thing I want to say to you, my sister, don't be annoyed. You see, Babcock University has one of the best medical schools in the world. Mm. You get okay. now, you can't read medicine. How much do they charge? Babcock University, I don't know. You can't, but it can't be less more than it can't be more than 10 percent. Whatever you read, right. right. God bless you. You can't read medicine directly in UK. I carry medicine directly in Canada. Two of my daughters are doing, trying to do medicine, mm. and they are doing biomedical sciences for years. Before in UK, I'm coming four years in UK and Canada. Then another two years in medical school before they come to do medicine. That time I don't eat it. <laughs> You're road <wrote> fast. <laughs> <laughs> that time I don't eat it. You get so you know what they do? They will now go to Dominican Republic mm. and do two three years, and then they can practice in the U in the US. Mm. You get God bless you. Now, so but when you have a medical school, so when you not carry Babcock certificate to okay. Canada or US, you get you just jump. So it's, you usually advise people to first go to Babcock, yes, and get your certificate before you try to go to those mm -hmm. places. So those these these things are here. But now that you say these things are here, let's even go back again to cultural values. Yes, mm -hmm. I believe that the new the Gen Z they have their own way of thinking, regardless of whether they school here or school abroad. Mm. They are they're, and their shock absorber is non-existent. Mm. I think parents too have also played a role in sheltering them so much God bless you. that they don't even have tolerance level for any form of discomfort God bless you. or anything that is out of their system. God it's true. God bless you. So you, when you listen to them talk, they only talk from their own experience and their own scope. Mm. So how do you think that parents can begin to understand we and instill this culture? We are the ones that are spoiling them. Yes, but we are the ones. So is it, is, it, is it not a bit too late to start asking them to think differently? No, see, that's what I'm saying. It's a flow. So this Gen Z people is a flow that new one wants coming. See, mm -hmm. a, a, a very big, foremost, if you employ yeah, them, they, 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 they shout on them. There, there's, 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 there's a big bank in this country. I'm not going to call their name now. Mm -hmm. Major bank. Mm -hmm. Because I speak. They call me to come and speak. They call me to come and come and speak. Mm -hmm. So one day I said, why do you come to come? They say because I'm a link between Gen Z and the old people. Yeah. You know, so I can understand it. I guess now. So I, I got to the class and two other people and I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, and then one guy just stands up and comes very rude to me. Very rude to me. What did he say? It's not something I'm talking about. Why am I wasting that time? What that's the Gen Z. That's the God bless you now. So, 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 I said, I'm not going to take this from you now. Do you understand? I'm older than your father. I'm not going to take this from you. I'm, only, I'm even older than your MD. Your MD can't talk to me like this. And the guy says, well, do your worst. Uh, you said what? He says, do my worst. Uh, you do your worst. Yeah, he says, man. So, so I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. I walk and they pay me a lot of money. I walk away. And the HR book comes and says, give me your account number, let me tell I'm not gonna take that. And then the HR, the HR guy is telling me this thing. He's a Gen Z. He, he's a Gen Z for what? But I want to ask, did the content of what he was saying actually make sense? It didn't make sense. Because the mode of delivery was but, wrong. But, totally but, wrong. Totally but, wrong. Because, because, because it was a sales class yeah. and I was simulating an aggressive target. So I told the young girl, come and market me. In a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood. So, okay. so as she was talking to me, I was giving it to her. So I was simulating that that aggressive environment. Okay. And then this boy, and he can't. Why are you insulting her? All of twenty five. You get, why are you insulting her? You don't even know what I'm trying to do. And then, but see, the most painful thing about the whole thing is that the HR woman called me justifying that behavior. Are you serious? Yes, begging me to make an vex <laughs> that she please, that she, have, that she come out to class. I that think, it's Gen Z. No, but why she, she, she why she was supporting him or she was. No, 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 I think she wants to progress. She was, Let's she, move she, forward. Bless you. She was <laughs> very, very tolerant of him. She was begging me, almost asking me to go back to class to apologize. People because are that is how that is how That's they how are. Is. <laughs> when we are being brought up, I, they will sack you and blacklist you. You won't get work in any bank in this country again. But she was so tolerant is it? Is 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 this our generation? Yes, yes. That's probably on this show. We are, we are tolerant of the excess. excess because, 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 because we didn't have it, oh. let my child have what I have. Oh. Let my child have one that did not yeah. have. Oh. Do you get me now? That's why we are, we are having all this problem. Oh. Do you get me now? My, my son will come and take the car out at 1 a.m. in Lagos. Yeah, but that's the time they go to their night. God bless you. I'm going to be saying, I leave them. Oh. You can't do that in New York. Oh. 
Mm. Do you hear me now? They are kidnapping people who are cutting their head and selling the, 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 Are you guys me now? You get so 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 when I try to be hard, they say no, no, no. You see, we permit all of this. Yes, we're a bit excessive mm -hmm. with our children. Do you get and, and it's beginning to show because the level of drug addiction in that in that in that space is very high. My friend is retired army Air Force General. But I think it applies everywhere, no matter where you are. No, 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 no. But it is more permissive there than okay, here. let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. Nana, do you have any last words for us? Um, I guess all I want to say is um, I think Wego University is here to stay. Um, we're here to change the face of education in not just Nigeria, in Africa. And I honestly believe that Dr. Herbert's vision will live on mm. um, and we will become the leading university in Africa. That's very good. So, That's very good. Well, well said. His mission it has become your vision and Absolutely. by God's grace, you will take it to the highest stratosphere. Mm. So, to educate a man in mind, thank you so much, both of you, for first and foremost, for being with us in perspectives. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> to educate a man in mind and not in morals, like Edgar said, is to educate a menace to society. Sometimes it is impossible to know where you are headed without reflecting on where you come from. As Nena also said, there is boundless beauty in our culture and traditions. Culture is how we act, think, and behave based on the shared values of our society. It's how we understand symbols, from language to hand gestures. In African society, there is a set of values that guide our behavior. Our hospitality, respect for old age, hard work, and good character. The value of life lies not in the length of days, but in the use we make of them. So, and always remember, like I keep saying, life is a nailing curve. That's all we have time for today. We do in perspective here on Arise News with me, Ruth Osimen. See you next week. <laughs> And with me, Ola Torera Majekodumi Oniru, the long-term impact and return on investment on high-quality education is highest globally of any other fathomable funding. Education is the foundational pillar of human progress and prosperity. By investing in our schools, we invest in global peace, human development, industrial excellence, and a brighter future for all. High-quality education provided by merited leaders is an essential, essential key to a better world today. Our world needs a much stronger dosage of high-quality mass education, healthy love, and greater humanity. Thank you for watching Perspectives. Thank you to our special guests for joining us today. Have a great weekend. See you all soon. Goodbye. Bye.